between 2018 and June 2022, Mr. Mashinsky sold at least 25 million sell tokens, realizing at least $68.7 million Hello everyone, today our guest is a popular YouTuber investigator, CoffeeZilla, who in this video reveals the real face, the horror story of fraud and corruption of no debunked and crashed crypto bank, Celsius and its founder, Alex Mashinsky. And this pitch was really attractive, not to mention Celsius offered 8% on your money at a time when your bank probably offered less than 1%. Mashinsky said this is part of how he was battling the banks. We basically thought, okay, how many people in the world want to earn more money on their money? Yield. And we said 8 billion people are going to say, of course, I want to earn more money on my money. So the customer was there. The second part was, we can take on the banks and win. Why? Because 8 billion people are going to join you. And that was really the key to make that decision. Then we went and presented it to 200 venture companies and they all say, nope, you're not going to win against the banks. So we went to the community. We actually went to the community and said, we're going to build this for you. Do you want it? And we raised $50 million from the community. And then we went and raised $400 million from investors after we showed them, hey, a, a million and a half people showed up, 30 billion in, in asset. They've given us 30 billion. We've proven that people will send somebody money to manage or uh, digital assets to manage. And that was really a breakthrough. No one has done that uh, in 700 years of banking. There hasn't been anyone who actually taken on the banks in the real way. And this clearly worked. Celsius customers told me that the reason they switched was just to get a higher yield on their money. Honestly, I was looking for a place to stake and earn interest and earn yield on my crypto. I was actually first in crypto.com and then I saw Celsius on YouTube. It had higher yields and everything, so I kind of moved my stuff from crypto.com to Celsius. People were writing about Alex Machinsky and all the messaging on the website. You know, he's an entrepreneur that had created all these companies and he didn't need the money. You know, this was billed as a high yield savings account that was outside the traditional financial systems. But it wasn't just the competitors who convinced people. It was Machinsky himself who gave a really compelling argument that banks were lending out your money and keeping most of the profit for themselves. And he was going to do something different. In the week, paying fees upon fees upon fees. They charge us $24, 24% per year to charge, to basically borrow money on our credit card. They charge us 24%, but they pay us 0.1%. So where is all that profit going to, right? It's going to the toll collectors. So the opportunity is really to, for all of us to, again, take the, go off the, off this toll uh, highway road and go into a new world where we don't, we don't pay any tolls, we don't pay any fees. We act in our best interest. And this is the vision that most people bought into. Alex was going to lend out your money and pass most of the profits back to you. 80%, in fact. And that was the argument that was repeatedly said. I remember them talking about how 80% of their uh, profits were returned to users as a reward. And so that's what I thought I was doing. I thought I was loaning money to someone that had posted enough collateral to pay back in the event of a default. We then lend it to the institution. The institution are the ones paying the interest. So we've collected over $700 million of interest from the institution and distributed most of that, 80% that went to the retail users. 80% of whatever we collected. Celsius next year are benefiting because we are lending the collateral you gave us, redistributing 80% of that income with all the other Celsius. So it's a win, win, win. Now, of course, if that's not enough to convince you, Celsius also said that in addition to making high yield, they were extremely conservative. They told customers that there was collateral backing up all their loans in case of a disaster. And the key thing to understand here is that this secured loan with collateral is much less risky than unsecured loans where there is no collateral. And ultimately, Celsius said because of this, a bank run wouldn't affect them. Crypto lender went from managing billions in assets to filing for bankruptcy in just a matter of months. CNBC obtained dozens of internal documents that in part show disorganization as prices drop and the industry faces a liquidity crunch. The collapse of Celsius came as a huge surprise to anyone listening to Alex Mashinsky. All the way up to shutting down, he had claimed that Celsius had billions of dollars in liquidity just ready for withdrawals. We have billions of dollars in liquidity. So anyone who wants to withdraw, 
that's a, that's a service. You can withdraw at any time. So what happened? If that was true, why did it fall apart? Well, the picture wasn't clear at the time. We heard allegations from people like Dirty Bubble Media that Alex Mashinsky was selling his own tokens. We also found out that Alex withdrew money off of Celsius before it shut down. But at this point, we didn't fully understand why Celsius had collapsed. Was it just incompetence or greed? These were open questions until a few weeks ago because that's when the court-appointed examiner released her 600-page report detailing exactly what happened with Celsius. In this massive report, the examiner details not only systemic lying, a Ponzi-like scheme, but also tells us what I think constitutes fraud. Here's a breakdown of the report, starting with the biggest lie of all, the interest you'd get on depositing your crypto. You see, for years, Celsius had been telling people they paid what they did because it was 80% of their profits they were earning from all these loans. And we're very proud as well to pay out over 80% of our revenues directly back to the community. And so this is something that we are gonna continue to do. And we look very carefully at all of our numbers um, on both sides to make sure that we are doing that. And that's also what is helping us decide the rates um, every single week that we're paying out on coins. But this was a lie. According to the report, Celsius did not distribute up to 80% of its revenues to its customers because it had little to no profits to even distribute. Celsius also made no efforts to set its reward rates based on its yield. And look, I know what you're thinking. If they didn't set the rewards based on what they actually were making as a company, what did they set them based on? Well, on getting more customers. And according to the report, Celsius consistently set its reward rates based on what they perceived was necessary to beat the competition. And for most of Celsius's existence, the rewards it paid exceeded by substantial amounts the revenues Celsius could earn. So for those of you following along, the whole idea that we're paying 80% of what we make was a total fabrication. Celsius just wanted more customers. Even as some within Celsius management attempted to lower reward rates, Mashinsky, quote, overrode their recommendations and refused to do so. One example of this was when Jason Perman, a Celsius executive, recalled Mashinsky saying that Celsius could not cut its reward rates because of his belief that our customers will leave us. And that, quote, our investors didn't invest in us to shrink, they invested in us to double. So with this new understanding that they weren't gonna be able to lower reward rates, they realized they were stuck with the other strategy, trying to raise what they were able to make with their assets by employing riskier investment strategies to try to get closer to profitability. And guess what? They lied about this too. Even as the company started to make riskier investments like offering unsecured loans, Mashinsky told people the opposite. He said everything was business as usual. Celsius is very, very strict at who we lend to, right? So we only lend to the first tier institutions, first tier exchanges. We do not uh, do all kind of unsecured lending like a lot of people are talking about or saying Celsius does unsecured. We do not do unsecured lending. But of course, this wasn't true. Celsius internally had been talking about the number of unsecured loans they were giving out increasing, shown here in orange. And internally on Slack, executives were furious. Quote, I just told him that the number is increasing and the overall ratio of collateral with institutions is going down. Another executive responded, yes. So why does he publish so dangerous statements? Everyone out there, if you have an unsecured loan, tell everyone that I'm a liar. But in the end, no one did call him a liar, even as he literally asked for it. Here, I'm calling on anyone, anyone who received an unsecured loan, go on Twitter, make a fun out of Alex Mashinsky. Say, hey, I took a loan, here's my loan number. You know, I took a loan from Celsius and then I did not have to provide at least 200% collateral. And through the next year, Mashinsky continued to boast about how safe Celsius was, even as the team began to engage in riskier behavior. In the same year, Celsius would recognize $800 million in losses from some of these investments. Mashinsky told the Financial Times in June 2021 this. From a risk standpoint, we are probably one of the least risky businesses that regulators worldwide have ever seen. Around the time he was saying this, Celsius was over a half a billion dollars underwater on their liabilities, as shown by the black line, which represents a net surplus. By the end of the year 2021, Celsius would owe a billion dollars that they did not have. Things were looking bad. 
What does that money mean to me? It means a lot, actually. I've been working since I was 14. I was investing this my first couple of jobs out of college. Ultimately stopped us from buying a house because, I mean, it was half of our down payment was locked and, you know, I couldn't get it. So, I mean, it was a big impact, actually. Honestly, that loss uh, was a culmination of many years of work, uh, to be quite frank. I saw it as my way to escape. What that money means to me, it's a lot more freedom with uh, what we're able to do as a family. To describe what the money I lost meant to me is really hard because it's tied into a lot of what it feels like to be a grown-up or an adult. I, I feel like I, I have this stunted development. You know, I'm almost 40 at this point, and I'm very aware as a stunt man that wants to be physical. If we have a kid last year like we wanted, all right, maybe by the time he's 20, I could show him some stuff. But the longer we wait, the more I watch my my dreams and my future and my hope to be like a proper functioning adult slip through my fingers. It's, it's hard to describe what that's tied into, but it just feels like I can't proceed with life, <laughs> if that makes sense. It does make sense. And hearing these stories made me realize just showing lies isn't enough. If I'm gonna demonstrate fraud, I need to get to the heart of Celsius. And that's when I found out about the flywheel. The flywheel was central to Celsius's plan to become profitable, and here's how it worked. Celsius was not just a crypto platform. They also had a crypto token called Cell, and they controlled the vast majority of it, up to 95%. So if the price of Cell went up, theoretically, the balance sheet of Celsius would also go up, and they could sustain these insane reward rates. However, in order to do so, they needed people to actually want Cell token. So the flywheel was Mashinsky's plan to do that, to create a positive feedback loop. And the way they did this was set up sell token like a rewards program where you could earn bonus interest if you held a certain amount of sell, which obviously incentivizes people who wanted to get the most out of their accounts to buy and hold these sell tokens. On their website, they described this process as a self-sustaining ecosystem where users would buy sell, earn more yield, get more crypto, collect interest, earn more yield, lend more coins, collect more interest, and buy more sell tokens. Now, of course, you might notice a problem here. What if people actually go to sell their sell tokens, wouldn't that crash the price? Well, Mashinsky had an answer for this too. He told the community that Celsius would buy sell tokens in order to pay their rewards, theoretically creating demand out of thin air. Here's him explaining this. Basically, more visitors usually translates to more app downloads, and that translates to more deposits. More deposit allows us to do more loans. More loans uh, generate more income, and more income means more income that Celsius generates from these coins that people gave us translates into us having to buy more Bitcoin, Ethereum, sell token, and so on. So, okay, that's the flywheel. Why does it matter? Well, the flywheel and this sell token became the place where all sorts of shenanigans happened with Celsius. According to the investigation, quote, between 2018 and June 2022, Mr. Mashinsky sold at least 25 million sell tokens, realizing at least $68.7 million on these sales. Daniel Leon, also a founder of Celsius, sold at least 2.6 million in sell tokens for at least $9.74 million as well. That's a cash out of over $70 million while Celsius was buying these sales to prevent the price from going down. Quote, Celsius often increased the size of its resting orders to buy all of the sell that Mr. Mashinsky and his other companies were selling. The former chief financial officer would write, we are talking about becoming a regulated entity and we are doing something possibly illegal and definitely not compliant. Some employees, of course, were even more direct. Quote, if anyone found out about our position and how much our founders took in USD could be a very bad look. We are using users USDC to pay for employees worthless sell. And even worse, in 2022, their coin deployment specialist described their practices of buying up sell and using customer coins as very Ponzi-like. And a few weeks later, when this person was asked where money was coming from to buy sell, this person would say, users like always. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the core story. Not merely lying, it's a story of using customer funds to buy out your executives and manipulate your own cryptocurrency so you can sell for a higher price.
Thank you for watching the interview highlights of CoffeeZilla. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.